Hello to all. Today we are going to discuss about a very important topic related to the human physiology and that is known as the body fluids and the circulation. This is the part one of this topic. Body fluids and circulation. Now the question arises that why this system is important for the body. As we know very well that all the living organisms need efficient supply of nutrients, gases and other essential substances. And not only the supply of the nutrients and the gases is important, it is also important for the body that in the body various excreted products or the harmful or waste products are formed, CO2 is formed, and the removal of these substances is also required. So, the circulatory system in our body is responsible for all these things. Means, if we want to supply the nutrients to the various parts of the body, if we want the supply of the oxygen, if we want to remove the excretive products, if we want to remove the carbon dioxide, then the circulatory system is the prime requirement. So altogether we can say that if we talk about the human beings, the fluid which is responsible for all these purposes is the blood. Not only the blood, lymph is also important for this, but we will be first focusing on the blood. We can say it as that blood is meant for the transport of the substances to the cell as well as blood is important for removal of substances from the cell. So this to and fro right, is done with the help of the blood. So in this topic we will be dealing with the body fluids as well as we will be dealing that how this body fluids are circulated. Okay? And altogether we will be discussing about the circulatory system. So, the origin of the circulatory system. Very first you must know that the origin of the circulatory system occur by the mesoderm of the embryo. As we know very well, all the body parts are made up of the different embryonic layers. Means ectoderm, mesoderm and endoderm. We can say here that mesoderm is the layer of the embryo. Right, which is responsible for the origin of the circulatory system. Okay, now the circulatory system or the circulatory pathway is actually of two types. One is known as the open type of the circulatory pathway, and the another one is known as the closed type of the circulatory pathway. Now, what is the difference between the open and the closed type? So, here in the open type. The blood is pumped by the heart, passes through the large vessels which open into open spaces or the body cavities and the body cavities are called as the sinuses. Okay? Means I want to say that the blood pumped by the heart first pass into the large vessel and large vessel open into the cavities right? or the open spaces called as the sinuses. Okay? means here there is not a closed network of the vessels okay and here the tissues are in direct contact with the circulating fluid because the blood is not flowing in the vessels or the pipes so the tissues are in direct contact with the circulating fluid and this type of the open circulatory system is found especially in the members of the phylum arthropods and the members of the phylum mollusk okay but the another one is the closed type of the circulatory pathway where the blood pumped by the heart is always circulated in the body through a network of blood vessels means i can say that this closed type of the circulatory system is just like a pipeline system means there is a pipeline system in the body which supplies the blood to the various parts of the body and also here the tissues are not in direct contact with the circulating fluid 
here the tissues were in direct contact with the circulating fluid but here the tissues are not in direct contact with the circulating fluid and this type of the circulatory pathway is found in the annelids such as the earthworms and all and also in maximum chordates okay this type of the close type of circulatory system is found so these are the two types of the pathways open type and the close type okay and you must also know that if we talk about the humans then in humans two types of the circulatory systems are observed one is known as the blood circulatory system where the fluid is the blood and another system is the lymphatic system where the fluid is the lymph means here in blood circulatory system we study the blood blood vessels and the heart in the forthcoming videos we will be discussing about the blood blood vessels heart okay and in the lymphatic system lymph is the fluid and this fluid is carried by lymph capillaries lymph vessels also the lymph nodes and lymph tissues or we can say it is lymph tissues and organs are associated with the system okay so there are two types of the circulatory systems one is the blood circulatory system and another is known as the lymphatic system okay now also you must know a little bit of information about the blood circulatory the blood vascular system the study of the blood vascular system is called as the angiology the branch of the biology which deals with the study of the blood vascular system is called as the angiology and the father of the angiology is william harvey okay and william harvey called the heart as pumping station of body because heart is meant for pumping the blood okay now very first we will be discussing about the blood circulatory system and in this blood circulatory system the fluid is the blood so very first we will be discussing the blood now very first you must know that what is blood basically the blood is a fluid connective tissue it is a connective tissue fluid connective tissue and this blood consists of the two major components one is the plasma which is the fluid matrix which is straw colored means it is pale yellow and it forms the 55% part of the blood while the another component of the blood is the formed elements basically these formed elements are forming the cellular portion of the blood and it forms the 45% part of the blood okay in later videos we will be discussing all these the plasma and the formed elements in the detail but in this video i have discussed the blood with the help of flow chart okay now the formed elements or the cellular portion right is of two types one is the blood cells one is known as the blood cells and the another one is the blood platelets okay now the blood cells are of two types erythrocytes and leukocytes okay the blood cells are of two types erythrocytes and leukocytes now don't be confused erythrocytes means what the rbc and leukocytes means what the wbc so these are the blood cells and the third one is the blood platelets okay now this leukocytes or the wbcs are again of two types granulocytes and agranulocytes as the name is indicating that in the granulocytes the cytoplasm is granular in nature and in the agranulocytes the cytoplasm is not containing the granules okay and this granulocytes are again of how many types three types neutrophils basophils and eosinophils neutrophils basophils and eosinophils and out of these 
the most important type of the granulocytes are the neutrophils and they are the most abundant one okay and the a granulocytes are again of two types monocytes and the lymphocytes okay and these lymphocytes are of two types b lymphocytes and the t lymphocytes b lymphocytes and t lymphocytes okay so this is the flow chart of the components of the blood in the next video we will be discussing in detail about the plasma as well as all the formed elements so thanks a lot for watching me if you want to take the screenshot of this video you can take 